We're going to talk about meiosis today. We're going to talk a little bit about the midterm. So let's get into this. And uh, basically, we're going to pick up right where we left off and uh, get right to the, uh, the Mentos chromosomes. Remember, last day I was showing you these pictures and saying, hey, this is one way that you can think of chromosomes. Think of them as Mentos. So if you remember, uh, what's going to happen before mitosis or before meiosis is interphase. So interphase, you're going to have your DNA replication. And during your DNA replication, that means uh, all the chromosomes are going to copy one another, be copied. So in this case here, you can see there's a chromosome. Let's say this is chromosome number one. And uh, chromosome number one is replicated, and so now there's two chromosomes. But remember that you, as an individual, you're diploid, and you have two chromosome number ones. One chromosome is from mom, and one chromosome is from dad. And so you have two copies of that chromosome. Each, at this point, has been replicated and have sister chromatids. So the term we use for this is homologous chromosomes. So keep track of those words, sister chromatids, homologous chromosomes, very important to know the difference between the two. Of course, we have other chromosomes. So there are some other chromosomes there. You can see they've been replicated, they're sister chromatids, and they're another pair of homologous chromosomes. So the ones on the left, those could be chromosome number one, the ones on the right are chromosome number two. And like I said, we have two copies of each because we are diploid organisms. Okay, so let's talk about meiosis. Uh, I showed you these slides before, just reminding you that uh, in interphase, you get the replication. So all your chromosomes end up uh, getting replicated and they exist as a pair of sister chromatids. And in meiosis, there's two divisions. So in the first division of meiosis, the homologous chromosomes are gonna separate. And in the second division, the sister chromatids are gonna separate. So this is where it's really important that we can count and make sure that we have all the right amount of DNA in the end. So if your cell starts off with two chromosomes, in meiosis, each cell is gonna end up with one chromosome. So that's kind of important to follow that. So let's take a look at the steps and see what is going on in each stage. And if you're familiar with mitosis, you'll see a lot of parallels with meiosis, you know, except for we're gonna do everything twice because there's gonna be two divisions. And the big differences are gonna be between what happens with those homologous chromosomes and those sister chromatids. So let's take a look. So there's our interphase. Uh, this is the same photo I showed you before of interphase where we have a cell and the DNA has replicated. You can see the centrosomes have also replicated and uh, it's about to start thickening, right? So meiosis is gonna have four stages. Uh, uh, meiosis one is gonna have four stages. It's going to be prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, and telophase one. So let's take a look at prophase one. Uh, so if you remember prophase of meiosis, we've got that uh, condensing of the chromosomes. We have the nuclear membrane disappears, and we have the uh, microtubules. They're starting to form. Uh, late prophase or prometaphase, they're going to eventually start attaching uh, at the centromeres. So one thing that's special to note about meiosis one is that this crossing over event occurs. Uh, I don't like that term because it's not necessarily used everywhere, but it's used in our textbook. So I will use that particular term. Uh, sometimes you may say it's called uh, homologous recombination, but we will refer to it as crossing over to be consistent with the textbook. So let me just go back. Oh, I thought I had that. Okay, yeah, I thought that I had these slides a little earlier. Uh, I'll go back to that, don't worry. Uh, and you can see uh, what is happening with the crossing over is those two chromosomes are literally crossing over, meaning the DNA strands are kind of uh, intertwining and they're gonna exchange a little bit. So you can see that process is happening here. We've got the red chromosome, the maternal chromosome and the blue paternal chromosome. And uh, if you take a look at this little diagram, they're showing you um, these little chromosomes here, the resulting process where Basically, the uh, resulting chromosomes have little bits of each other. So this is important for genetic diversity. And uh, the place where they cross over has a word, it's chiasma, chiasma. And uh, so we'll, we'll come back to these slides in a minute. Let me just go back to the steps here. So there's prophase one. So chromosomes condense. Uh, the uh, sister chromo or sister homologous chromosomes uh, start lining up and cross over and the nuclear membrane is gone and microtubules are starting to form. 
So lots going on in prophase one. That's the hardest one to remember because we have at least four or five things going on in prophase one. Uh, metaphase one. Metaphase are where things line up along the middle. In this case, the chromosomes line all up along the middle, but notice the homologous chromosomes here are lined up together, okay? So you've got both homologous chromosomes after the crossing over have lined up there before they separate. So anaphase one, if you have the homologous chromosomes lining up together in metaphase one, they are going to be, that's what's gonna separate in anaphase one. So there they go. So the sister chromatids are still together, but the, uh, the spindle fibers are pulling each homologous chromosome apart. And then telophase one is just the cleanup after that. And so sometimes the nuclear membrane reforms uh, and sometimes it does not, kind of depends at this stage uh, what is going on in terms of the, uh, you know, whether your gender is male or female, uh, the particular organism, different organisms do this in different ways. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, human meiosis because there are differences that happens in females and males. Uh, so it's, uh, it's something important to, to know a little bit about. So there is meiosis one all together. So notice what happens is if you look at the initial diagram here, looking at the first one here, there are six chromosomes there. Okay, so we've got uh, three red maternal ones and three blue paternal ones. Over here we have two cells. Each cell has uh, three chromosomes. So we've got from diploid 2n equals 6 to a haploid n equals 3. We still have the sister chromatids together, so we can still do another set of division and everyone ends up with a one, one haploid copy of the genome. So meiosis 2 is very similar to mitosis. Uh, now that we've gotten those homologous chromosomes out of the way, you can see prophase 1. Uh, again, it really depends on whether they have unthickened. If they thicken in prophase 2, uh, but in many cases they don't need to. So really it's just a matter of uh, new spindle fibers forming is kind of one of the main things that happens there. Uh, the spindle fibers are going to attach to the centromeres and they're going to line up in metaphase 2 and then the sister chromatids are going to separate in anaphase 2 and then finally we get telophase 2 where we get a new nuclear membrane. So I know that people have seen this before. I, I mean, it starts at probably grade seven or nine or something like that, and you, you review it again, and I can't remember if it's grade 11 or 12. Um, so good to review those steps. I'm not gonna ask you about the whole procedure, but I may ask you about one or two, right? Like uh, uh, the short answer or multiple choice questions. The big one to know is how to do the um, mitosis meiosis question. I'm gonna show you uh, in a few minutes, okay? And like I said, the biggest thing is gonna be understanding how to count. Uh, and uh, making sure that you can be consistent in all your pictures. So I'll bring you through one of those exercises in a couple of minutes here. So here's a quick test yourself. It says, which stages of meiosis are these? So you gotta look and see what is going on. And uh, so no, let's take a look at the one on the left. So the one on the left, we have uh, these two things together, and those are the homologous chromosomes. So this has to be meiosis one. And since they're lined up in the middle, that is definitely a clue that we're looking at uh, metaphase one. So metaphase one, you can use a Roman numeral or if you wanna use a normal Arabic numeral, you can, you can use either. So let's take a look at the second one. You can see that the, uh, uh, the uh, sister chromatids are separating and uh, they're separating using uh, looks like red licorice microtubules, so that's kind of fun. So this is definitely part of meiosis two, and since they're separating, this would be anaphase two. So hopefully that one is pretty straightforward. Like I said, the most complicated thing is what is going on in prophase one, where you have all the crossing over and all that. So I think I have some slides on that um, we'll discuss here, and then we'll do a problem. So why are we doing meiosis? Like, what's the point of going from diploid to haploid? Well, uh, as we talked about last day, uh, humans, uh, to reproduce, we have sexual reproduction. And uh, this is something that's discussed a lot in ecology classes because you've got different animals and organisms that reproduce sexually or asexually. And there's, there's a lot of advantages to sexual reproduction um, in terms of genetic diversity. So 
that's great. So it means that, uh, you know, our children will not be identical to us and, uh, you know, for better or worse, but genetic diversity is really good in populations to combat things such as viruses or, uh, you know, adapt to different environments and, and all those kind of things. And you see a lot of uh, adaptations in humans uh, uh, in different geographical locations. Uh, the biggest uh, and most obvious example is uh, the closer you live to the equator, uh, usually, um, at least historically, the darker your skin is to protect you from, uh, from UV rays. And the further away from the equator, uh, the less dark your skin is because it's important to get vitamin D. So, um, you know, that's, that's uh, genetic diversity has, has led to that kind of thing. So how do we get gene genetic diversity? You can see I have three mechanisms written there. First one is independent assortment of these homologous chromosomes. So I know we want to keep everything neat, and if you take a look at the one on the left, you've got the blue paternal chromosomes, and you've got the red uh, maternal chromosomes, and they're going to separate together. And uh, you can see in that case, I'm just looking at the one on the left for now, we end up with these combinations, right? So we've got the, all the paternal chromosomes together and all the maternal chromosomes together. But if you look at the one on the right, they don't have to separate together. Uh, that is, is each chromosome separates independently. So if you look at the one on the right, we end up with different combinations of, uh, of chromosomes. Now think about a human where we have uh, uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes and you've got a lot of different assortment going on. That's why with your siblings, you know, you're, you're very likely going to have some traits similar, maybe similar hair color or similar facial features, and then some differences, right? Because of, um, because of all this independent assortment, you get different alleles from, from different parents. Sometimes you get more of the same ones, sometimes you get more of, of the different ones, uh, depending on how the assortment happened. The second uh, thing that contributes to genetic diversity is the crossing over. So I showed you this slide before and showed you that little bits of those chromosomes, they like to trade places. And uh, so you may not get your full maternal chromosome. You may end up getting your maternal, uh, maternal chromosome with little bits and pieces of uh, the paternal chromosome from, from your mom or dad. Um, so there's a little bit of mixing and matching going on here, which, is, uh, which contributes to that genetic diversity. So there's the final, um, final play, and you can see that all the daughter cells are genetically distinct. So this is good. Genetic diversity is a good thing to have in populations. Um, makes things interesting, and, uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, the last part of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, that leads to genetic diversity is the random fertilization, right? So, uh, you know, which egg drops uh, versus which for, uh, sperm fertilizes it and all that, uh, you know, that's, that's part of the whole process. Okay. So I want to talk about uh, human meiosis and uh, then we'll do a problem. Uh, so human meiosis, you can see they're showing uh, obviously the two, uh, the two sexes there, you've got a person with ovaries and a person with testes, and the person with ovaries is going to make uh, eggs, and the eggs are, are haploid. So that's looking at the top here, you've got an egg right here. And uh, the person with uh, testes is going to make sperm, which are haploid. And then the fertilization procedure is where those two things come together, and you end up with a diploid cell, a zygote, which is going to grow and, and those cells are going to divide and eventually differentiate and make a full um, diploid adult. So what's different in uh, what's going on with the ovaries and the testes? Um, this is where it's actually really interesting. If you take a look, so on the top, uh, we've got a little symbol. I don't really know why that symbol means a female, but it does. Uh, and you've got uh, someone with uh, ovaries there. And if you take a look at what's going on is meiosis one, right here, is happening before birth. So any ladies in the crowd here, you did your meiosis one way back when you were a fetus. And, um, and then those eggs uh, basically sat there waiting to develop. And then when you hit puberty, you can see this as we've got between birth and puberty here, uh, meiosis two occurs. And uh, meiosis two occurs on a regular basis in humans. So uh, some uh, monthly roughly and uh, so that cell um, that egg cell undergoes another uh, division and you can see it's actually an unequal division you can see one of the cells oops some um, that's the zygote is it now one of the cells gets all the good stuff and one of the cells um, does not and so you end up with one egg usually uh, sometimes people drop two eggs and so you get twins and so that's what's going on in females and the males uh, 
we have our, our gonads are developed uh, in, the, uh, in the fetus and uh, those cells reproduce. You can see they're reproducing by mitosis. And, uh, and that's about it. Uh, basically, uh, the testicles are, are, are formed and uh, they don't really get active and produce sperm until puberty. Now then when puberty happens, you've got uh, meiosis one and two happening on a continual basis. So a man is uh, um, gonna be fertile uh, any given day because uh, once they hit puberty. So that's human meiosis. Okay, so let's get to one of those problems. Okay, one of these problems, I'm going to compare mitosis and meiosis in a problem. And you're gonna to have to draw something for me. So for your midterm, you're gonna need a piece of paper and you're gonna to have to draw some cells for me. And then you're gonna to have to take a picture or a scan and email that to me after the midterm. So we'll talk a little bit more about how that's going to work. But like I said, basically you're gonna have a problem. You're gonna draw it for me. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So this is comparing mitosis and meiosis. You can see in this case here, we have two N equals six. So we're starting off with six chromosomes in the parent cell. So notice the parent cell is the same, okay? So keep that in mind when you do your mitosis meiosis problem. Uh, the interphase, the parent cell, is always gonna be the same, same number of chromosomes. So if the answer is six or eight or 12 or whatever, that's the number it's gonna have. The difference, I'm looking at mitosis uh, on the left, is that we have all the sister chromatids are gonna separate in one separation. So we've got six sets of sister chromatids. And so in the end, we get six chromosomes, so two N equals six. In meiosis, uh, we have the two divisions, remember? So in division one right here, we have the homologous chromosomes separate. And then we end up with a second division, which is not shown, but in the end we get half the chromosomes. So we get N, which is equal to three. So I think I have a problem here. So here's a problem, and uh, first part of the problem is you're gonna have to read the question and interpret what the question says. Uh, so in this case here, I didn't give you a full sentence. I'm just telling you you have a diploid organism, and n equals three, so right away, I'm just gonna think, okay, two n equals six. We're not gonna do any plants or fungi or anything funny. Uh, we're just gonna think about what's going on in animals and humans. So we have, uh, some information about the number of, of chromosomes. So this is the first part. You gotta figure that out, what my question is asking you. And then uh, that's half a mark. And then most of the rest of the marks are gonna be from drawing some stages. So in this case here, you can see I'm asking you to draw these stages here. And I'm gonna switch to the whiteboard now and we're gonna try this problem. So uh, let me see here, where's the whiteboard? There it is. Okay, so I have the problem written there. I'm just gonna shrink it a little bit so that we have lots of space on here. So you're gonna to have to draw, uh, the question is gonna tell you to draw two things. So it's gonna tell you to draw chromosomes and the spindle fibers. So you don't need to draw a nucleus, you don't need to draw a nuclear envelope, nothing fancy, okay? I'm mostly looking to see that you can count and that you're putting those chromosomes and spindle fibers uh, in approximately the right places. So we'll do mitosis first. That's the easy one, so mitosis. And you can draw your cells as circles. So I'll draw, I'm just gonna move things around a little bit. So we've got metaphase, anaphase, and the daughter cells, okay daughter cells, one and two. And meiosis we'll put over here. In meiosis, we're looking for metaphase one. Anaphase one. And okay, metaphase two. So remember when we get to meiosis two, we've already done one division. So I'm gonna draw two cells and anaphase two. So I'll come back in a second. I'm just drawing my cells, getting things ready. If this was a paper exam, I would draw the circles for you. And that would be very nice, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. Unfortunately, it's gonna be a little harder for me to give you a piece of paper. And then we've got our daughter cells. So one, two, three, and four. 
Okay, so let's go back up to the problem and read what it says and we'll work on mitosis first. Okay, so it says we have, uh, and we've already decided that uh, our 2n equals 6, okay? So like I said, that's important to know how many chromosomes we're going to start off with. And I guess I'll do my chromosomes in red. And um, so I just need to draw my metaphase. So six chromosomes. So you can draw them fancy if you like. So I'm drawing them kind of thick here. This first one is fancy. But that's not really necessary if you just want to do stick figures. I'm going to draw them stick figures like this. And I got to draw them a little bit smaller. I didn't leave myself a lot of space. So let me, maybe if I zoom in, draw them smaller. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six chromosomes. And don't forget the spindle fibers. So the spindle fibers are going to go to the end of the cell to uh, some centrosomes. So there's one set, there's another set. So it should look something like that. So half a mark for each picture, basically. This is gonna be worth five marks overall. So half a mark for getting the right number of chromosomes, half a mark for each diagram, and you gotta be consistent, okay? I've seen cases where people now, they take those six chromosomes and suddenly there's like 12 in anaphase, and I don't know what is going on with that. If you're not consistent, that's not gonna be very good. Okay, so let's do anaphase. I'm gonna zoom in just so I can draw it a little bit better. Remember anaphase, uh, the chromosomes are gonna be separated. I'll draw my first one fancy for you. You can see it's, it's getting a little bit of pull but that's not necessary, you do not need to be fancy. Okay, so the rest of them I'm just gonna draw like sticks. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so uh, just like that, there we go. They're getting separated. So maybe not the best diagram, but you know what? Like I said, I'm not looking for anything fancy. I'm looking that chromosomes are in the right place, spindle fiber are, are in the right place and the right thing is going on. So remember metaphase, we have uh, things lined up in the middle. Anaphase, we've got that separation occurring. So I'm just gonna zoom out and then I'll draw those daughter cells. And the daughter cells, uh, you're gonna have six chromosomes in each. So just uh, with no, uh, just one chromatid of each. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's it. So that's mitosis. So right there, it looks like we've got about two marks out of five. Uh, so we're gonna get most of the rest of the marks from meiosis. So let's just go over here and uh, think about what is going on. So I'm just gonna, I wanna zoom in and I don't wanna lose the mitosis. So I'm gonna just squeeze that in over there. So meiosis, same number of chromosomes. We just have to arrange them differently, okay? So in this case, remember our language, we got to say that the, uh, the homologous chromosomes are together. So basically the first set is going to look like this. Then I'm going to put them really close to each other. If you want to, you know, if you want to keep track of things, you could draw, you know, paternal chromosomes in a different color like that. If you really want to show the crossing over and all that, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just counting that you can do things properly. So, okay, I draw my spindle fibers. I'm going to go to the end. So there's two out of six. We'll draw the rest of them. The rest of them will all be in red. There we go. I'm getting too fancy. This is taking a while, so I'll just draw them simple like that. Okay, so they're together. They're, they should be touching, but if they're not perfectly touching, that's fine. They should just be close. And if you want, I can color these ones blue if you, uh, if you like colors. I know some people are really into colors and then other people are not. My brother-in-law is terribly colorblind and he's shown flowers and he's just like, oh yeah, I guess they're nice, I don't know. He's pretty sad about it. Okay, so there's metaphase one. So anaphase one, we gotta be showing the separation. So you gotta, gotta break them apart somehow, okay? Make sure it doesn't look too much like metaphase one. So we'll draw those. I'm gonna draw them kind of over here a bit more. There's one. There's two and there's three. Draw the blue ones over here. So one, two, 
three, making sure they're visibly separated, okay. So by the way, this is the same problem I gave you last day for mitosis, same number of chromosomes. I want to just be consistent for this question here. And uh, in this case, I think last time I drew them separating up and down, this time I'm separating them side to side, so it doesn't matter which that you draw. Okay, so I'm looking at mitosis and meiosis, and like I said, they both have the same number of chromosomes, six chromosomes, so make sure that you have that in your problem. You're not uh, multiplying them or making some disappear. So let's look at meiosis two. So metaphase two, we're gonna follow up from the anaphase, and uh, this is a lot like mitosis in that they're lined up along the middle and the sister chromatids are gonna separate. So there we go, there's the ones on the left side, so the red ones are over there. And the blue ones are over here. So notice I still have six chromosomes, just three in each cell, okay, but the same, the total number is the same. So there we go, there's my little metaphase two. So hopefully at this point you can see where I'm going, anaphase two is really easy. We're just gonna separate those chromosomes, so one, two, Three, there we go, those chromatids are separated. There we go, they're traveling to the other side of the cell, the left or the right. Okay, almost there. Okay. And then we can see everything here at once. I have one more stage, which is the daughter cells for meiosis. So let us draw those. That is just the consequence of that and that you can count, right? So three, 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 and three. So nothing fancy required. I'm okay if you wanna be fancy, but it is not necessary for this class. Um, so take a look at that, right? Um, that's what you're gonna do for your mitosis meiosis question. So I told you it was half a mark for the right number of chromosomes, uh, either shown in the diagrams, or you can write it out. Um, uh, half a mark for each diagram. So usually this is at a five marks and I'll usually have at least one other question in there I might ask you about one of the stages or something like that. Make sure when you answer these questions, you use appropriate language, right? So I think uh, last year I asked people something about what was different between um, metaphase and mitosis and uh, metaphase one of meiosis, right? So you got to tell me about that. Uh, you know, we've got sister chromatids are separating one. You've got homologous chromosomes separating the other, right? So important to use the proper language. Okay, so I know we're we're getting on with time. I have a few more things to say about uh, meiosis and mitosis, and uh, and then uh, we'll hopefully have a good 15-20 minutes here for review. Uh, okay, so this was, we're just going to skip that for now. Uh, we'll come back to that for review next day. So one thing to know is that sometimes separation uh, doesn't happen properly. And there's a term for this. This is called non-disjunction. Terrible word if you ask me. I would have called it something else, but that's the, the scientific term that's used. And uh, so you can see there's an example there. This is happening in mitosis. So what is going to happen is you are going to end up with cells that are messed up. So you can see this particular cell has 2n minus 1 chromosomes, and this one has 2n plus 1. So one of them has an extra chromosome, another has not enough. Uh, this is often bad. Uh, the cells often are not happy and they die in, in many cases, and so you don't even know this happens. Um, this can happen in meiosis as well, and so you can see it can happen during meiosis 1, during the first separation, or meiosis 2. Second separation is so you can see you have a bunch of gametes in that case that are either uh, short a chromosome or have an extra chromosome. So like I said, in many cases, this is fatal uh, to the cell. Uh, having too much DNA is usually not as bad as not having enough. Um, if you're a plant cell, it might be a little bit more tolerable, uh, but, uh, but human cells are a little less tolerable. There are some conditions though, and you may be familiar with this condition uh, where people do have an extra chromosome. This is called trisomy 21. So um, if you look at chromosome number 21 right down there, that individual has three chromosomes. And so this particular condition is also known as Down syndrome. And so these individuals uh, usually have uh, a number of developmental 
issues, uh, both uh, physically and mentally, uh, but they are, um, you know, they are, uh, uh, the cells aren't, it's not fatal, um, but it does cause some, uh, some biological uh, complications for these individuals. Um, there's other diseases that fit this category as well, of being a multiple, uh, a different set of chromosomes, like I said, having extra. This is just the most famous one. Okay, so um, I'm going to skip this. I do want to uh, spend a good 20 minutes talking about the midterm, and uh, we'll uh, we'll save some of these things for review. Uh, so let me see here. I gotta find the uh, midterm PowerPoint. I had it here a moment ago. Just bear with me. Okay, so there it is. Oh, so I see somebody has a uh, question in the chat. Um, someone says, do you want us to label the diagrams or just draw them? Just draw them. Hopefully your spindle fibers don't look like chromosomes. Um, you know, it's very rare if people have a really bad, bad diagram. I can't tell what it is. So let's talk about that midterm. Um, I have 20 minutes to, and there's a lot of material to cover. Uh, so maybe I'll just say a couple of things about the midterm. Um, hopefully you've started studying a little bit. Now you can see there's Calvin and Hobbes. If you are looking for a good break from studying, Calvin and Hobbes is, is wonderful for that. You can see he's, uh, the cell biology midterm coming up, imagine that. And he says, have you studied yet? No, I'm waiting for inspiration. You can't just turn on motivation to study like a faucet. You have to be in the right mood. What mood is that? Last minute panic. So hopefully you're not having too much last minute panic, but you do want to be studying for this midterm. Uh, so the midterm is next Monday uh, and we're gonna use the lockdown browser again. Um, I think this is slightly different from the, what I posted on, uh, on Moodle, but uh, uh, the breakdown will be pretty similar anyway. I, I, I always, uh, you know, kind of when I, this is the plan, I, I might tweak things. So uh, I do want to talk a little bit about the lockdown browser and uh, give you some reminders uh, about this, but uh, I'll get to that in a minute. So you've done multiple choice uh, type problems already. So that could include some multiple choice or some true and false. Uh, I just showed you what a mitosis meiosis question is going to look like. Um, so make sure you read the question carefully and draw the diagrams and uh, hopefully that should be easy marks if you know how to do that and we'll get some practice uh, doing that on Friday. I'm going to have some short answer questions. So what do I mean by short answer questions? Uh, last time I had definition type questions. These will be more like uh, um, asking you something. They could be anywhere from fill in the blank to uh, asking you for something that would be uh, kind of like a one sentence answer. So there'll be five of those type of questions. So they could be things like, uh, what happens during prophase? Or um, what are the products of the Calvin cycle? Or, you know, something along that line. So asking you about some sort of cell um, uh, concept that we, we learn in class. Or give two examples of, or, or something like that. So one mark each, five of those questions. Um, there might be a matching question as well, like I said, might be because I'm still deciding whether to you know, do that or definitions, um, but I think the plan is I might do a matching question. Um, and then there'll be a long answer question. And, um, and I guess the other thing I'm still debating in my head is whether I do two long answer questions, but let me uh, do a summary here in a minute of some things I told you, but I do want to talk about the lockdown browser and then I'll, uh, I'll come back to some of these things. Remember the lockdown browser, I do want you to treat this as an in-person exam. Uh, what I will do uh, when I get a chance is I'll, I will reactivate the quiz uh, that we did before, the test quiz, to make sure you have your technology working. Uh, I know that for one of my other courses, uh, the second time around, uh, um, some people had some difficulties. So if you do have extreme difficulties, uh, you may need to reboot your computer, which is not good because you, know, you, you want to have all that time possible. So I recommend you reboot your computer uh, directly before. Make sure you don't have any uh, other programs running in the background. Make sure you're close to your Wi-Fi. Make sure you're not downloading some Netflix somewhere else on another device so that you have the best signal possible. Uh, so remember, uh, treating as in-person exam, make sure you don't have any um, 
you know, papers or anything like that nearby, except for the blank one that you're going to have for your mitosis meiosis question. And uh, um, you're going to log in uh, through Chrome or Firefox or, or Edge or whatever your normal uh, browser is to access the test. And uh, just in terms of uh, internet connection issues, if you are somebody who has issues or you might have issues, or you think you might have issue issues, uh, there are options to write on campus. So for my other class, I had uh, at least one student write in the library. I have no idea whether she booked a room or what she did for that. Uh, I had another student who found an empty classroom. Uh, so there are options to do that. Uh, if you do feel you need to come on campus, uh, just let me know and I'll see what I can do for you. So I uh, just want to make a note about, um, about this whole thing, uh, you know, in terms of uh, everyone's gone through a couple of midterms or more already. And, uh, you know, just a stern warning uh, that there have been people caught cheating and uh, that was not good and um, they have suffered the consequences which was a zero on a midterm or another thing and uh, uh, so you don't want that to be you okay so just a reminder i am looking for suspicious activity if i think your answer looks like it's from an internet source i will run that through plagiarism software so if i were you i would just assume that uh, you know uh, you're being watched and and uh, so I do want you to know, I do take academic integrity very seriously. Okay, so I wanted to actually go back to the whiteboard and write a few notes for you about some things that, that we kind of talked about um, regarding the, the midterm and kind of just, uh, I guess you could say, distill a few things and think about what we covered. Because I know a lot of people right now are, are probably overwhelmed thinking about, holy cow, how much did we, rec how much did we cover? So let's talk about that. So biology 107 midterm two. So let's talk about some of the things that we, we, we discussed. So initially, sorry, I just, uh, something's going off my computer here. I think somebody's asking a question, but I don't, can't seem to find the chat balloon. It disappeared on me. I have no idea why. Can't see the whiteboard. Okay, thank you for telling me that. That's good, good to know. <laughs> Okay, Biology 107, midterm two. So first part that we looked at was we talked about, uh, we'll call it bioenergetics. And okay, I can't spell obviously. Let me just erase that. Energetics and enzymes. Okay, so that was uh, roughly two lectures and uh, for that, I want you to know lots of definitions. I'm not gonna ask you some long answer question about the laws of thermodynamics or anything like that, okay? Uh, really, these, these two units were really just to get you ready to talk about respiration and photosynthesis. So respiration, let's talk about that a little bit more details, okay? So, as I mentioned, uh, there's a handful of reactions. So there's actually four reactions that you need to know about. So we've got glycolysis. We have uh, pyruvate oxidation. We have the citric acid cycle. And we had oxidative phosphorylation. Okay. And I guess lastly, if you want to kind of include that in here, why can't I scroll down? There we go. That's better. We also talked about fermentation. So I'll come back to that in a moment. Let's just talk about photosynthesis for a second. 
So photosynthesis, really two kind of reactions or processes, I guess. We have the light dependent reactions, light dependent. And number two, we have the Calvin cycle. Okay, so what is important to know about these things? Okay, I know that's really overwhelming. So, as I told you before, I want you to know three things. What's going on with the carbon? What's going on uh, with ATP? And what's going on with electron carriers? So the main thing that I want you to do for all those reactions, when you start your studying, I want you to write down the reactions, the overall reaction of glycolysis, the overall reaction of pyruvate oxidation, overall reaction for the citric acid cycle, oxidative phosphorylation, light dependent reactions, Calvin cycle. Um, for respiration, we don't care about water. Uh, for photosynthesis, we kind of do, it's an essential ingredient. Um, but, uh, you know, write out those reactions. Um, that's going to include ATP, it's going to include, include NAD. H, include FADH2, it's going to include uh, ADP, and so on. And, uh, and that's where I want you to start. So remember, one thing I told you that will be on the exam, one of those long answer questions, I'm going to show you, uh, it's going to be a picture of one of these things. So it would be a diagram of like the citric acid cycle, or a diagram of the Calvin cycle, or a diagram of glycolysis, or something like that. And the very first thing uh, that you're going to answer is what is this? And you're going to answer this is oxidative phosphorylation, or this is the light dependent reactions. And then I'm going to ask you some other sub questions about it. And that's going to be the hard part, okay? But I'm going to focus on these things. I'm going to focus on the carbon or the ATP or the electron carriers. And the hard thing is just really reading what my question says and, ask, and answering what is going on. Okay, so let's, let's take the, uh, the citric acid cycle, the Krebs cycle, for example. Let's say I showed you the Krebs cycle, and then I ask you, what is the carbon dioxide for? Well, in the, in, the, in the citric acid cycle, the carbon dioxide is a waste product. So you can say that. It's a waste product. It's going to get expelled by the cell, and ultimately in an animal, it might get expelled by the lungs. I don't, you don't have to go through the lungs and the physiology. We haven't really talked about that stuff. But you just can say that carbon dioxide is a waste product. And maybe I'm going to ask you, what is, uh, why did we make the ATP, or what, where is that going to go? So you're going to say ATP is a molecule, it's the energy uh, currency of the cell, it's used to do cellular work, okay? So again, you need to use the language of the course, that's super important stuff. Uh, I could ask you about ADP, I could ask you about NADPH, so I'm going to ask you those types of questions. I'm not going to ask you what oxaloacetate is for, probably most of you have already forgotten that word already. So that's what the question is going to be like. I'm going to have to come up with enough things to ask you about it to get uh, uh, five marks. I could ask you where the reaction takes place. So glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm. The citric acid cycle takes place in the mitochondrial matrix. Um, so, you know, that could be part of the, of the, um, the question. So it's going to be one five mark question. So if you know what those reactions are, you can at least get the first mark, okay, uh, and be able to recognize what it is. Take a look for certain clues, you know, what is being produced, uh, what is being consumed, and that's going to help you figure out what reaction that we're looking at. So that's an important question uh, to study for. So like I said, start your studying by writing out these reactions and knowing what, uh, go, what they begin with and what they finish with, so that uh, uh, we can... Um, uh, you can uh, answer this question and, and a few more that are going to be uh, in the test. Uh, so we also talked about the cell cycle, right? So the cell cycle was mitosis and meiosis. And remember, there's going to be a five-mark question around mitosis and meiosis. So if you look at that, maybe it doesn't look so bad, I'm hoping. Um, I know that's a lot of stuff in there, but 
you know, this is kind of where to focus, right, on, on uh, for these units. I know every unit has all sorts of little things going on. We've got non-disjunction of meiosis. We've got, uh, you know, we've, we've got, uh, you know, fermentation and respiration. We've got uh, lots of little things going on, but I need you to focus here. So if you take a look at this, there's really, um, let's see here, one, two, three, four, you know, six essential reactions, okay? Fermentation is kind of half essential. I am gonna ask you a question somewhere in it, probably not a long answer question about fermentation, uh, but definitely, you know, multiple choice or short answer. Uh, so six reactions uh, and then uh, um, mitosis and meiosis, so two processes. So, um, you know, a little bit to learn there. So uh, let me just see where we are with time. You can see we are running out of time, which is unfortunate. Um, go back to the PowerPoint here. Let me just take a look here. So there's the topics. I guess we just uh, covered that. And um, so if you take a look at these slides, I have a lot of information in them. And uh, so what I'm going to do is, I know some people have been asking me about this, is uh, I'm gonna have, um, so Friday is going to be a review session. And the Friday review session is going to be, uh, I'm gonna cover some problems. And I'm also going to have you break out into uh, you know, small groups. I still haven't figured out how to do that in Zoom, but I've been told you can do that. And I'm gonna give everybody some problems to work on. And uh, that's gonna be the style of review I'm gonna have on Friday. And uh, so you know, I'll ask you to do a mitosis meiosis question because it's a lot better if you work through them and get some feedback on whether you're doing them properly. Uh, but people have been asking, I know I had at least, uh, I think two people ask if uh, there would be any additional review. And so what I'm going to do is tomorrow, uh, we have our lab time slot. Um, so tomorrow from two to three o'clock, I will send you a reminder uh, tomorrow morning when I get on my email, uh, I'm gonna have a, an extra review session uh, tomorrow from two to three for, and it's totally optional. You don't want to come, you think you've got everything under control, that's fine. Um, this week's lab is part of a two-part lab. Uh, so if you don't end up doing much for lab eight, uh, you can push it off till next week. And I know lots of people have lots of midterms. So um, that may be a good thing that we can push off lab eight. I will have lab eight ready for anybody who feels they want to work on it. But uh, I think tomorrow I'll have the focus from two to three. Well, the focus will be reviewing this uh, for anybody who wants to, uh, um, uh, join the, uh, the optional review session. So I will send out an email tomorrow morning. Um, once I have that set up, uh, for some reason, my, my Thursday afternoon Zoom session vanished. So I'll have to find out where that link is and I'll, I'll send you with a reminder of the link. Uh, other than that, I think I'm gonna stop there for today. And uh, like I said, uh, join me tomorrow at two o'clock and Friday at four o'clock for uh, lots of extra review. And, uh, you know, send me emails if you have some questions of things in particular that uh, you're feeling like you really need me to go over, and I'll do my best to, uh, to cover those things. Or I'll tell you it's not important if that's the case as well. So that's all for today. I hope everyone has a lovely Wednesday and, uh, and rest of the week. So take care.